What's up guys? I'm Tony Woodark. I'm a wedding photographer out of Southern California and today I'm going to show you how to shoot a roll of film with a 35mm camera. This is the Canon AE-1, pretty popular camera and I'm going to shoot a roll of Portrait 400 with it. So let's do it. What's the difference between shooting film and shooting digital? Shooting film, I love because you kind of just enjoy the moment, capture it, and move on. Whereas digital, I feel like I'm shooting, checking it, shooting, checking, adjusting, and kind of finding perfection while I'm shooting. And you kind of lose the moment and get more caught up in the technical aspects of shooting. That's one big difference. I also just love the look of film. Even my digital edits, I'm applying a preset. I use Mastin Labs presets to make it look like film. So what's easier than uh, making a digital edit look like film is just shooting film. So I just love the timeless look and film just has kind of a feel to it. It's that grain, it's a little bit of that softness, um, and it's just that overall just texture of the photo. Film loves light and so it does a lot better when it's overexposed. If you underexpose it at all, it starts to get muddy and it really loses a lot of the information. With digital, you typically shoot underexposed because you can bring up the shadows in post and you wanna save your highlights. Whereas film, it doesn't save that information in shadows, it just gets muddy, but it really does a great job at saving the highlights. So with digital, most people shoot here. Digital cameras save a ton of information in the shadows and so you want and not too much in the highlights and so you want to underexpose and then when you bring it into your computer you want to get it back to exposure. Film hates being underexposed so you want to shoot here. Um, a little bit overexposed to proper exposure. With Portrait 400, every film has its own speed and so if you look right here Portrait 400's nominal speed is 320. So that's actually right here a half stop overexposed. So Portrait 400 does better a half stop overexposed. So on your light meter, you wanna either set your ISO to 320 here, or if you're using the light meter on your camera, set the ISO to 320 here. And then you shoot the entire roll with that same ISO. What I like to do is what's called pushing a stop. If you wanna push one stop, then you go right here to 640 ISO and I shoot the entire roll metered at 640 and then when I bring it to the lab I say I want um, plus one processing and it actually ends up processing right here and what that does is better contrast, better exposure and richer colors. One thing that you're gonna make sure you want to do is write plus one on your roll so you don't forget that you push this one stop. To load the roll of film, you're gonna to wanna to pull this up right here, and it's gonna open the back. And then you're gonna take this little guy right here with the knob part down, and you're gonna place it right in there. And then this locks the film back into place, and then you're gonna pull the strip across and feed it into this little roller right over here. You wanna feed it into that roller, and then you're gonna click the shutter and start clicking it to feed the roll in. All right, first up, we've got a roll of Portrait 400, and this is how I typically shoot a roll of Portrait 400. I metered it at 640, meaning I put on the light meter ISO 640, and then I pushed it to stop in processing. So let's see the results. Give me something new. I want it back. I'm just gonna 
Portrait 400 film and I metered at 320, meaning I put on the light meter ISO 320 and then I shot the whole roll based on those settings. So let's check it out. One thing you may have noticed in the film is just me using this light meter. I would suggest you guys buying an external light meter. They're not cheap. I would get a Sekonic one. Um, I think that's how you say it. This one was about 200 bucks on Amazon or eBay. They don't make it anymore. This is the L358, so you have to buy it used. But I would highly suggest it. It's got a lot of cool features, like you can pull the bulb out, bulb in. Um, this head swivels. You can set two different ISOs if you're shooting two different rolls of film. Um, it's just really important that you get a good reading so that you get the right picture that you want Especially if you're investing a lot of money into the film itself the scans You want to make sure you're putting the right settings in and you're learning from your mistakes and your successes So that you can continue to improve as a film photographer So if you're gonna buy anything I would buy a Canon a one for 50 to 100 bucks buy a couple of rolls of Portrait 400 and then invest in one of these because these are gonna last you and you just really wanna um, use your film wisely. One of the most common questions I got was kind of the film lab process. People asked how I edit my film, um, where I get it developed at, all of that kind of information. So check out this next part, it's super simple. Basically think of the different types of film that you buy and use as your preset. That's what's gonna determine the colors and the look and the feel of your film along with the settings and light that you're shooting in. And then once you get it, uh, the scans back from the lab, you're just gonna be adjusting highlights, shadows, contrast, that's pretty much it. If you have a great lab, they're gonna nail the temperature and um, just get really good scans for you. It's super important that you find a good lab. I use Goodman Film Lab and I love them. They're amazing with customer service and I highly recommend them. So yeah, watch this next part and you'll see how I do that. I'm at Goodman Film Lab and I'm just gonna drop off my rolls of film and I'm gonna show you how I fill out the form. Okay, here we go. So last Monday I dropped off the film and now it's Monday again. And so it took about one week to get the photos back. Um, Goodman Film Lab sends you like a WeTransfer link or a Dropbox link and you just click it and download it. And then you get a downloads folder and it has all your rolls separated by numbers. If you got premium scans, then they would, um, yeah, they could have the numbers of the rolls if you put those on the rolls themselves, so they'll organize it for you. Please don't notice the 73,000 unread emails that I have. I'm getting to those, don't worry. But yeah, so these are all different rolls that I dropped off. This first roll is just a portrait push that I shot. Um, next roll is the one that I shot at the beach that I'll show in this video. Um, so as you can see, it's just a bunch of JPEGs that they give you 
um, and it's just super easy and th they're already really beautiful looking so you could just post those right away if you wanted to but I just do a little bit of touch-ups in Lightroom and I'll show you those and then uh, this is the psychedelic blues film um, that I was speaking about on my Instagram I will get to that later it's pretty cool and there's another roll of that and then the last roll is the portrait regular roll that I shot um, and I'll show you those edits so I picked some of my favorite photos out of that bunch and I just brought them into Lightroom you could also just airdrop them straight to your phone they're already pretty good to go so this is the before and then this is the after so all I did well actually I haven't finished it because I want to even out the horizon there you go and that's done okay so as you can see this is portrait pushed so it's already got a lot of contrast and a lot of really good colors straight from the lab this is untouched the only thing i'm going to do is i'm going to straighten the horizon straighten the horizon okay and then um you can do what's called the j trick where you basically play with the histogram to pull out the colors but all that's at ending up doing is touching the highlights shadows and whites and blacks i will link that trick it's called the j trick on um, the links below it's super beneficial so um, you can do it that way or you can just adjust the highlights a little bit i just want to punch it out a little bit and then before after so not too much i needed to do just wanted to pop it a little bit more let's go to another one let's go to this one I just want to um, add some contrast and blacks into the photo. There's not much blacks, and so I'm going to pull that down a little bit. Pull the highlights down a tad. Pull the shadows up. And maybe the whites up a little bit. Before, after. So really not much being done. I'm just adding a little bit of contrast because the colors get a little bit flat with film. Same with uh, my daughter's friend Emma's feet. I'm going to straighten this photo out a little bit. Center her feet just a little bit more. And then, yeah, I'm gonna pull the blacks down, pull the whites up, and that's about it. Maybe pull the shadows up a little bit, pull the highlights up a little bit. This is before, after. So, really, you're seeing there's not a lot being done. Let me go to this is regular Portra, so not Portra pushed. Um, this is a roll of Portra 400 shot every 20 and I'm just going to add a little bit of contrast. I really like the colors in it and I don't want to blow it out too much. Pull down the highlights a little bit, pull down the blacks a little bit, shadows up, whites up, before, after. So really barely doing anything, just adding a little bit of punch and the contrast to it. Thanks so much guys for watching, really appreciate it. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button, um, hit like, do all those things. <laughs> really appreciate it, I've got a lot of great videos coming your way, so stay tuned, thanks. The next video I have up for you guys is gonna be fun. It's all about the new gear that I've been loving lately using, so yeah, stay tuned for that. It's gonna be coming up in the next few days, thanks.